Hi everybody, welcome back to our video spotlight. I'm Mike Martin. Back with us is John Fanning, our fine wine buyer. Today, as promised, uh, we're going to do another wine for Thanksgiving meal. Um, it's a Finger Lakes Pinot Noir called Heart and Hands, and this is their 2010 vintage. Um, we're selling this for $18.99. Before I get John to talk about this, I'm going to kind of show you how to open this bottle because it was it was a little weird. So I had my corkscrew in my hand and uh, pulled the pull the top off, and it's one of these glass tops. I don't know the name. I don't know the official name. I've really only seen them on like a. Alsatian, yeah, maybe German, German, German producer. Producer. Yeah, I've never seen so it. no corkscrew in the glass. Um, everybody, just kind of take it at, at an angle, and it just pops off. It's really cool, um, and it pops right back on like that. Yeah. It's a reusable bottle. I, yeah. I like those tops; I think they're nice. So yeah, I thought that was kind of important because it, you know you just don't want to yeah, crush don't, that. Don't be surprised. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about this peanut, John. Uh, Heart and Hands was was founded by a guy named Tim Higgins, mm -hmm. who I guess is from from Cayuga Lake area, and you know in high school worked for some wineries, did did you know a little bit here and there, mm -hmm. and moved away, got involved in other fields, and then kind of slowly returned to the wine business, and uh, notably spent some time working at Calera Winery, yep. in, famous for their Pinot Noirs, yeah, yep. California. Really, I mean. Claire is you know, one of the legendary California Pinot Noir producers, mm -hmm. kind of put California Pinot Noir on the map. So he's got a real you know, pedigree of, of working with, with Pinot Noir and, and great Pinot Noir and wanted to bring that to the Finger Lakes. Uh, I visited a couple of years ago and he, uh, he really wanted limestone soil, so did kind of just this aerial, uh, flew over the Finger Lakes, you know, plotting and mapping mm -hmm. and really found this plot of mostly limestone and I think only planted the estate vineyard maybe two and a half, maybe three years ago. Okay, yeah. So in time, all mm -hmm. the wine will come from the estate, mm -hmm. which is the goal. Uh, for now, he's buying grapes from you know, some pretty some pretty great vineyards mm -hmm. around the Finger Lakes. Uh, there's a vineyard called Hobbit Hollow on Skinny Atlas Lake. Mm -hmm. There's a vineyard called Nut Road on Seneca Lake. So sourcing the grapes right now, I'd say in a year or two, the wines will be estate. Mm -hmm. And kind of quickly, quickly been recognized as a, uh, Kind of the future great Pinot Noir producer of of the Finger Lakes of the Reach Hall. Yeah, so this is a pretty small production too. I think it's four or five hundred cases at the most. Um, but yeah, just uh, yeah, I'm, I was reading about he was at like you said, Calera. He yeah. worked for Atwater. I think Thirsty Owl. Yeah, yeah, a few other Finger Lakes um, producers, and even spent some time in France. Okay, uh, probably in Burgundy, I guess. If he's if you'd like to be so much, yeah. you would think. But uh, it's a it's a it's a nice looking uh, light colored. Pinot. It's, um, a, it's a pretty classic, like very, very cool climate Pinot Noir. Yes. You know, it's yes. not a, uh, I mean, for, for all the California talk, this is, you know, the last place this is from is California. Yeah. Uh, you know, lighter in color. It's got a nice some, earthiness to it. Um, some earthiness, some real bright fruit, real like kind of searing, like acidity, almost astringency on the finish, which I think makes it pretty perfect food yes. Pinot Noir. Definitely. Um, while Pinot Noir is always known as like the classic red for food and a lot of California styles or, or elsewhere just get you know a little too big a little too concentrated to really be that food friendly where I think this is exactly yeah exactly and it won't, and it, won't it won't really overpower I mean turkey is a pretty bland meat of course you got all the other fixing fixings I should say <laughs> right but uh, I mean this this will work real well it is a, it is a definitely a food wine um, it, it's got a nose of a little bit of raspberry raspberry and cherry um, but yeah it's it's actually it's actually quite nice I like yeah, I think there's maybe half a dozen, you know, of you know, a couple hundred wineries in the Finger Lakes. There's maybe half a dozen that are really seen as, a, you know, kind of the future of what the region yes. is going to do. Really focusing on the correct varietals and, and you know, making wine, um, you know, thoughtfully. And Heart and Hands is definitely, definitely one, and definitely one for yeah. the Reds. Yeah, good. So, um, you know, th so there's two uh, last week's Forge Riesling and uh, the Heart and Hands Pinot Noir. I think are two. Yeah, think small production, very high quality um, wines that you could, you know, serve, keeping it local here in the Finger Lakes. Yes, yeah, Thanksgiving meal is one of those times it feels, you know, just feels right to be drinking like local local yeah. wines for. I agree. Various reasons. So um, no points on this. I don't think. I think no, I'm aware of. No, so I don't think so. Not really important. Um, so it's eighteen ninety nine here. Uh, we got we got plenty. Yeah. Yeah. A few cases. Yeah. So check it out, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you later. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>